I'm going to be showing you guys what a man in the middle attack is with secure shell, why you need to pay close attention to the messages that you get on SSH use and not accept the wrong key. And what happens in a man in the middle attack is you have the original connection between you and your server. Well, the attacker is somewhere on your LAN or your local area network. So if you notice strange machines that are connected to your router, you may want to take a closer look. What these attackers can do, and say you're at a coffee shop, they can issue ARP spoofing attacks wherein it will turn that attacker into basically a proxy where they will forward everything. Your password will also be issued once you've accepted that new key. So here's an example of an SSH downgrade attack. The password is then sent over to the attacker. Here's another example where they use EtherCap, which is a great little tool. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on it down the line. This will allow you to easily ARP spoof. You can use it for SSH man in the middle attacks. At this point, they have put in the information, the interface, have a man in the middle attack, ARP, with the router here and the target machines over here. And what will happen to your screen is you will see this. It will say, it is possible someone is doing something nasty. Now, this isn't always going to be the case, depending on what is stored in your known hosts and what keys and fingerprints you have on file. So you may see something like this, where it doesn't give you the big warning, but it does show you this key fingerprint. And if it is a recognized host and a fingerprint, you won't see the fingerprint at all. It will just have the password prompt. And in here, I'm going to show you as an example. And at this point, we're going to connect, and it has added that. So there is no fingerprint issued back. I'm going to show you guys how to add it to make it passwordless. So we're also going to be checking the actual fingerprint to make sure it matches. First off, let's do that before we do anything else. So you see this up here. It says the key fingerprint is here. Now, why did it pop up? Because it wasn't recognized. Once I accepted it with yes, it had it on file, and down here, once you have a recognized fingerprint matching the host, you will just get the password prompt. You won't see the fingerprint issuing, asking you to confirm that it is what you want to connect to. Because this could be the fingerprint of a key a man in the middle attack attacker is trying to send you. And once you've accepted that, they will then be able to read everything and basically your secure connection is over. And then at that point, you've already stored the attacker's key on file. And at that point, uh, basically you can't trust anything anymore. So let's go over to the Pine phone I'm using in the example. You can use any Linux machine that you want to do SSH with. And let's go ahead and take a look at the fingerprint and make sure it matches. So when you get this fingerprint warning, especially if you're on a connection you can't fully trust, but anytime you get the fingerprint um, confirmation message or the warning, I suggest you go and log on to your device that you're logging into. And at that point, I want you to check the actual fingerprint stored in the, the server that you're logging into. So we'll do SSH keygen, then LF flag, then the location. And at this point, we're looking at the actual fingerprint on file. And now we see that it does indeed match. So the one up here, this terminal here is from my laptop. This one is already logged in to my server that I am actually logging into. And if you have any questions on any of this topics, please do leave a comment. Make sure to like it, share, and subscribe. I appreciate that and it helps the channel out. So we do match the actual fingerprint. So, so that is important. We want to ensure that 
we have a match here. Now, if this does not match from the client side where the actual confirmation message is, if it doesn't match what's on file from the server side, which you can if you have a Pine phone, if you're logging into your Pine phone, this is kind of a part two of my SSH uh, demonstration with Hydra and adding some changes to the SSH daemon's uh, conf configuration. So we're going to also go into that. We're going to make it so it doesn't need a password and also that it doesn't accept password logins. And that'll add another layer of security for you. For those who are, you know, Pine Phone users or anyone else who's running Linux SSH and wants to remotely log in without too much danger. Um, so most important part, make sure these fingerprints match from the actual server here this is the server terminal and this is the fingerprint of the file here for the ssh and it is the public key now we have this one as well this is the warning message on the client side as long as those two match you can feel safe that you are in a secure environment and if it doesn't match you immediately need to take a look at your network and fix that problem so the next thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna copy the public key over to the server so in every SSH instance you have the private and the public keys now the just like we went over PGP there is the public key is what you share with others in order to maintain a secure connection and the private key is what is yours and you'd never share that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy the public key over to the server we're gonna use SSH copy ID and then we're gonna just issue the user at host and you can also change the username if you're one of the Pine phone users who follow me um, you can change that username and at that point you add a bit more security from through obscurity where and people who see the host name or something else MAC address if you're not spoofing it um, they can't just guess your password and username based on the operating system being recognized so that's another option let's go ahead and finish this command 42.18 and what this is going to do is prompt me for the password and I'm going to need to issue that and it's going to copy over the public key and then I'm going to show you again and it shouldn't ask for a password next login. Okay, great. So now we can simply issue this and it shouldn't even prompt me for the password. And then what we're going to do is we're going to SSH config edit. We're going to go ahead and try this first. Great, so it worked. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and edit our sshd config and let's make it so it doesn't use passwords, so it uses just that public key that we just shared with the server. cd slash etc slash ssh. Let's go ahead and list all the files. Now what we need to configure here is the sshd. And we're going to go ahead and use nano here and we're going to add a couple lines that's going to disable the password allowance. We'll go ahead and make sure that these lines aren't already here. Okay, so at the bottom here, what I'm going to do is add password, authentication, no then what I'm going to do and ensure that you have everything exactly as I'm showing it typed out then challenge response so all as one word not space separated authentication no and then use Pam no and at this point we can save that file with control O if you're using nano then press enter then press control X to exit now what we need to do is restart the SSH daemon and at that point the new settings in the SSHD configuration are going to take effect I'm going to restart it we do system control restart SSHD the new settings are loaded 
So anytime you make an edit to a system service, you're going to want to make sure you restart that system service, and we've just done so. Now, if you haven't seen it already, this is pretty much part two to the part one Linux PinePhone SSH securing and Hydra demo. So if you haven't watched that yet, go ahead and take a look at that. I also showed some more configuration settings for SSH. You may also, if you're interested in further securing your SSH, you can even use only an onion address and I did a video on that as well demonstrating like share and subscribe and I'll be back later with more on how to protect Linux and your privacy